4 Steps to Know If You Can Trust Your Financial Advisor How can you tell if the person giving you financial advice is correct and trustworthy? What are the signs to look out for that will reveal to you if your financial advisor truly cares for you and is competent at their jobs and they are not just looking to take advantage? These are tough but very important questions to answer if you are on the journey to financial freedom and abundance because following the wrong advice will lead to bad financial decisions and will move you away from reaching your goals. That's why in this episode, you're going to get our four-step approach to knowing if you can trust the person giving you financial advice so that you can make better financial decisions and avoid financial mistakes. And of course, this advice will also apply to us, the Pinoy Money Academy channel, as we are also giving you financial advice. So feel free to use what you learn here in this episode to see if you can trust your financial advisors. And yes, that includes us. With that said, let's go to step number one. Step number one is recognize that financial advice comes from everywhere. Financial advice doesn't only come from financial advisors, insurance, or investment sales agents. No, 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 no. Financial advice can also come from your dad, mom, uncle, brother. It can come from a bank teller, book author, doctor, lawyer, celebrity. It can even come from a priest. It can come from a friend. It can even come from a movie, TV show, a billboard, a news report, or an advertisement. Money is such a universal topic. It's part of everyone's lives. That's why everyone consciously or subconsciously, intentionally or unintentionally, can be giving you financial advice. And you, consciously or subconsciously, intentionally or unintentionally, could be following that financial advice. So, first thing to recognize is that financial advice comes from everywhere because it is only when you're actually aware that financial advice is being transferred or given to you can you evaluate really and think about it if the advice is right or wrong, if it makes sense or if it's totally nonsense. For example, one advertisement of a local bank went something like this. It started with a narrator saying that we all have goals. Then it showed a father moving into their dream home, a woman who was opening her restaurant, and a young man who just received keys to his brand new car. Now, the commercial was implying that for you to get your goals of buying a home, starting a business, or buying a car, this bank could do this for you. Now. Many people will think of this commercial as harmless. You know, it's just another commercial. But what was the financial advice being given out? It was saying that if you have goals, the way to get those goals is to go to a bank and borrow money. Get into debt. Now, does that make sense for you? That the way to reach your goals is to borrow money? Is that something you would want to teach your children? <laughs> now take note, this commercial was aired nationwide. It reached the homes of millions of Filipinos saying that the way to reach your goals is to borrow money. My goodness, that's bad financial advice right there being aired on nationwide television. So tip number one, very important. Recognize first that financial advice comes from everywhere. Next, once you are aware that financial advice is being given to you, the next step is number two, investigate their level of actual competency. This is basically evaluating if the person is giving you the right or wrong advice. Now, when it comes to competency, take note that there are two kinds of competency and one carries more weight than the other. The first kind of competency is called positional competency. The second kind is called actual competency. So what's the difference? Positional competency is competence we assume people to already have based only on the position they are in. While actual competency is competency demonstrated by actual results. Now, for example, let's consider a bank manager who has 20 years experience. Is this person competent? Now, many people, just because I said bank manager would assume that a bank manager is someone who is financially competent, that they would be able to provide good financial advice regarding investments or business. After all, they're the bank manager and wow, for 20 years, that has to count for something, right? Well, not really. That's just positional competency. 
When it comes to actual competency, this bank manager could be limited to knowing only their specific company procedures and products because that is where their training and exposure is limited to. But when it comes to other investment options that you can't get from the bank, then maybe the bank manager remains as clueless as your average person not working in a bank. So the very important lesson here is to not mistake positional competency for actual competency. When it comes to following financial advice, look for actual competency. Now let's go to another example to really drill this lesson down. How about a successful big-time entrepreneur who is earning millions per month from owning various food franchises? Is this person competent? Can this person be trusted? Well, this person clearly has actual competency on running food franchises. But that's it. And even if this person is super rich, super wealthy, he has yet to demonstrate actual competency on other areas of finance. So this person might be very good in business, but only average when it comes to investments. So yes, you can trust his business advice, but maybe not so much when it comes to investments. Now, continuing with the lesson, let's now talk about actual competency. How can you measure this? There are three things you can watch out for. Number one is the person's personal results. What has this person accomplished for themselves in the area that they are giving you advice on? So let's say a person is giving you advice on real estate. What are their personal results when it comes to real estate investing? Now, the second thing to look at is number two, the person's results through other people. This refers to the results that this person's colleagues, customers, clients, or students have gotten with the help of the financial advisor. This is actually a more powerful form of actual competency because it means that their advice not only worked for them, but it's proof that it has worked for others. Then the third piece of evidence for actual competency is the person's ongoing education. Is this person still updated on new developments and what's happening in the world? This is important because the world is changing all the time. Competency can become obsolete. So this is to make sure that the person giving you financial advice is really staying up to date with whatever advice this person is giving. Now, here's a nice and really subtle way to know if your financial advisor is staying up to date. Ask them this question. I'm looking to learn more about whatever topic there and ask them, what's the latest book or training you got regarding the topic? Okay. So for example, a person is giving you advice on Forex trading. So say to this person, hey, I want to learn more about Forex. What's the latest book or training you got regarding Forex? Now, if they can't give you a recommendation, then that's a sign that they are no longer staying updated. And that's it for step number two, investigate their level of actual competency. Now, that was a bit long, so let's do a recap. You learned that there are two kinds of competency, positional, and actual. Positional competency can be misleading because it is only based on that person's position. So you have to look out for actual competency, which is based on results. Actual competency is manifested in three ways. First is through the person's own results. Second is through the other people's results based on their advice. Third is through their ongoing education. And the quick question to ask them is, what's the last book or training you got about XYZ topic? So you can find out if they are staying updated. After you evaluate the person's actual competency in this manner, it's going to be pretty obvious to you if this person is really competent or incompetent in the advice that they are giving. But take note that having actual competency doesn't immediately mean that you should follow their advice. This brings us to step number three. Step number three is get a feel if they are a giver or a taker. Now in this step, we evaluate the person's intention for giving out financial advice. Why are they doing it? Now people will generally fall under two categories, givers and takers. A giver is someone whose primary objective is to help others more than themselves, while a taker is someone whose primary objective is to help themselves. Now, take note that takers can also sometimes help others, but with a hidden intention if they will be getting something in return. 
So in this step, ask yourself, does this person really care for me more than their own personal objectives? Now, this step is going to be very subjective, but the mere act of pausing for a moment and thinking about it and evaluating if the person is a giver or a taker, our gut feel, our instinct will most of the time be correct if a person is a giver or a taker. Now, once you've had the feeling of whether this person is a giver or a taker, this brings us to step number four, which is to take the appropriate course of action. After you've evaluated the people giving you financial advice, they can fall under four categories based on whether they are competent or not and whether they are a giver or a taker. So let's start with the incompetent takers. These are people who are looking to take advantage of you. Plus, they don't have any real knowledge of whatever advice they're giving you. So obviously, the right thing to do here is to avoid them at all costs. The next possible category is the incompetent giver. And an example of this could be your caring relative, a parent or a brother giving you financial advice. They have sincere intentions of helping you. But because they aren't experts in that area, they can also be sincerely wrong. So the appropriate course of action here is to respectfully decline or ignore their advice. The next category is the competent taker. These are experts who are looking to help themselves more than help you out. Sleazy salesmen fall under this category and a majority of scammers also belong here. They appear to look very smart and good at what they do but their hidden agenda is for self-gain. Now, the appropriate course of action here is to cautiously observe and evaluate. Just because the person is a taker doesn't mean that they are giving you bad advice. They're probably just giving you advice in which they will also benefit. So the course of action is to cautiously observe and evaluate. Now, if your gut feel says no, if your instinct tells you to walk away, then you walk away. Then, the last and ideal financial advisor is the competent giver. These are the kinds of people you should trust. And that's it for the four steps to know if you can trust your financial advisor. Now, the more you practice doing these steps, the better and faster you can tell the givers versus the takers and the competent versus the incompetent advisors. My hope is that in this episode, you now have a much clearer approach of evaluating the people who are giving you financial advice so that you can make better financial decisions, avoid financial mistakes, and win the game of wealth. Hey there, J3 here. Did you enjoy this episode? If you did, well, there are two things you can do right now to continue your journey towards financial freedom and abundance. First, subscribe here in our Pinoy Money Academy channel so that you'll get updates on our new episodes so that I can send you free training videos on everything and anything about money. Second, if you want faster results towards financial freedom and abundance, you can subscribe to our Five Pillars of Wealth online video series. This is a free series of three eye-opening, life-changing videos where you learn about the five most essential concepts needed for anyone to become wealthy. And if you don't know these five pillars of wealth, well, you're disadvantaged in your journey. You can view this training for free online just by going to the following URL. That's PinoyMoneyAcademy.com slash 5PW. The link is displayed here on the video. Again, the link is PinoyMoneyAcademy.com slash 5PW. I look forward to seeing you in our next episode. Until then, always remember that wealth is a choice, so choose to be wealthy.